Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.D. Worski, the Toronto Website Developer, and in the second video tutorial on my sequel, I'm going to show you how we can create tables. Uh, this is probably my fourth time recording this tutorial, so we're just going to plow through and get to that content. Uh, before we do, you know, some more about my site, Toronto Website Developer.com. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. You can also buy my book, How to Become a White Hat Hacker. Each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free, keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20 but do want to help out, please leave a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. I'm nearing the 1.1 million total views on all my video tutorials, um, and your support continues to help me uh, get these video tutorials out there. Alternatively, if you haven't already, I should say additionally, uh, subscribe to my channel. Please do so. Coming up on 7,800 subscribers, I'd really like to see 8,000 uh, within the next couple months. So, all of that said, Let's head back to the documentation on MySQL, and you'll see that I've got a couple pages open here. First one that we're going to take a look at is the documentation for how to create a table. Um, if you're not familiar with MySQL documentation, this might seem uh, a little bit intimidating, but it's not. Uh, let's walk through it so you understand kind of what's going on, and then we'll dive into the code. So you'll see here, when you read this, um, optional parameters are going to be in these square brackets. So to create a table, you're going to go create, table, and then the table name. Um, you can create it as a temporary table, and that'll be something we cover off in later video tutorials where we're going to be looking at how we can um, improve some queries, and we can do that with temp tables. Um, additionally, if you're going to be using this across, you know, production environment, staging environment, you can add it if not exists so that you won't clobber existing tables. Once you do that, you have to define uh, some definitions, you have to provide some table options, and then you provide some partition options. Now, this is kind of your typical structure, and then if you drop down, you can see create definition is down here, create definition, and you'll see that you typically have a column name and a column definition. What is the column definition? Again, drop down, and you'll see that you provide a data type uh, and a default value uh, and a few other things that we're going to walk through as well as examples. And what's a data type? Well, then again, you drop down, and you'll see that you have a few different options here from integers to real ints and all of these um, depending upon the size. You also have bar cars, uh, which is really just strings, uh, and then sign of some, some other options in terms of longer text. Um, that's the gist of it. You're pretty much always just going to use this create table and then pass in a high level definition. I'm going to show you examples of that where we create a customer's table and an orders table. So let's get into that. Let's connect to our database. Uh, so we created this last time. So my SQL user dash P, and I'm just going to pass in the, the name so I'm connected to it right away. It's going to ask me for my password. Remember, we do that so that it's never in the history. And we can see if I type in show tables, I don't have any tables. So let's go ahead and create one. Create table customers. And you'll notice that I've done this in capitals. Uh, this is just for your benefit. Typically, whenever you're reading my SQL, um, you'll see that any system commands are always going to be in capitals, and then your input's always pretty much in lowercase. And that's just so you can understand, uh, just readily look and see what's going on. Um, you'll notice it in the documentation. Here it is in the code itself. So now what I want to do is, first column is typically always going to be an ID column. So that's what I'm going to add, uh, an ID. And it's going to be an integer of 11 digits in length. Um, and I'm going to say that I want it to auto-increment. Oops because I don't always want to be passing in the ID row because I'm not necessarily going to know what this is. MySQL will take care of this for me. And then I'm going to tell it that this is a primary key and I'm going to pass in a name, bar car, and I'm going to say not null. So that's my table definition. I've got two columns. I've got an ID and I've got a name and the name has to be populated. I can't insert anything without a name. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that I'm using engine NODB. And I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to tell you that I have an error on that. And hmm, it's probably related to my not null. Oh, shoot. That was dumb. Not null is fine. Primary key does not have an underscore. Okay, not null is not fine. What's the syntax for not null? Let's go back up here. Data type, not null, default value. Isn't that what we have? 
don't want the comma. There we go. Okay. So, engine in ODB. Um, if we go back to the documentation here, you can see that there are a bunch of different storage uh, engines that are used by MySQL. Really, you don't need to know what these are, but I just wanted to flag the reason why we're using InnoDB, the total storage limit is 64 terabytes. It has transactions. Transaction being, if you're writing a whole bunch of data to different tables all at once, if one of those writes fails, everything fails. Uh, and that's part of being ACID compliant. Um, again, don't worry too much about that unless you're going to be deep diving into MySQL. But if you are, you probably don't want to start with my video tutorials. Grab a complex, in-depth look at MySQL, some type of book. Um, and additionally, we also have B tree indexes. So this is a binary tree. Uh, if you don't know what a binary tree is, you should probably Google it. It's a pretty um, important concept in computer science, and you always end up seeing it everywhere. So, um, anyways, uh, it's an algorithm you're going to want to check out. So that's our first table. Um, now that we have that created, we're going to create our second table, which is our orders table. And so we're going to create table orders again. ID int 11, we're going to auto increment this bad boy. This is going to be a primary key. And then we're going to pass in a customer ID. And this is also going to be int 11. This is going to be not null because I want that. Um, we're going to do a created at, and this is going to be a date time. This is also not null, has to be populated. And then what we're going to do is a foreign key and I'm going to show you what this means uh, with documentation. So we're going to head over here and you'll see I'm at the foreign key and I've got the examples clause but if I scroll up you can see kind of what's going on here using foreign keys. Um, let's create one and then I'll explain what it does. So you'll see that I've gone ahead and gone uh, foreign key so I'm going to name it. That's what it's looking for there. So foreign key is just going to be customer ID and then what it wants I believe is the customer the references the table and then the column so we're going to do that references customers id and then what we want to do is uh, tell it what actions to take so on delete cascade that's what we're going to use on delete cascade and then we're going to close that up engine equal to no DB, and then we've got that created. So what we've done is we've created two different tables. We've got the customers table, we've got the orders table. What we want to do is if we delete a customer, we want to delete their orders. Otherwise, we're going to have this reference to orders to a customer that don't really make any sense. Um, so again, you might not want to do that with an e-commerce table, but I'm doing it for an example here. Um, so essentially what happens is I create uh, a customer, then I create some orders. If I delete that customer, MySQL will automatically take care of deleting all the records that are referenced to that customer. So that's what a foreign key is. Um, yeah, so on delete cascade, you can also do an on update if there's a relationship there. And so this foreign key, you see it uh, actually a lot with Rails uh, and, and whatnot, but you can do it in any database. I think Drupal uses it in a few different places. Um, so yeah, so that's essentially it. Now, if I go ahead and I go show tables, you can see that I've got two. I can go describe customers and I can get a description of what that is looking like. And I can also go describe orders and you'll see that um, I've got this all set up. And the mole there is referenced to our foreign key. And uh, no, 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 these guys can't be no as well. Uh, and so that's it. In the next video tutorial, what we'll do is we'll actually take a look at the CRUD functionality. So create, read, update, and delete. Uh, and I'll show you how we can run those queries. And then from there, we'll start getting into some more complex uh, stuff like temp tables, uh, playing with our indexes, and then inserting some crazy amount of records and then doing some queries and how we can speed those up. So that's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully it helped you. If it did, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. And hopefully we'll see you for tutorial number three and so on. Thanks very much for watching.